Hey guys, Alan here. Welcome back to my workshop. In this video, I'm going to make a rack for ER40 collets. Very simple, let's get straight to it. Okay, so I've been storing um, my ER40 collets in this drawer. And it's sort of, yeah, it's been alright, but they flop around in the drawer. And I tried making things better by putting this bit of sponge there, but um, they still move around. You can hear when you shut the drawer, they sort of clank around a bit. So I've had enough of that. What I'm going to do is make a, um, a plastic, I've got a plastic slab that I'm going to use to cut to fit this drawer. And uh, I'll bore some holes in it to uh, locate these uh, collets and stop them roaming around. So we want to, uh, it's 164 wide, so we'll make the slab 162 wide, so it's a millimetre each side. And then um, it's uh, 265 long, and I'll make it the full length so the slab doesn't uh, move around when the door's open and shut. So uh, let's get into it. So this is the material I want to use to make the uh, collet rack. It's a slab of uh, plastic that's uh, part of an offcut or pair of offcuts actually that I bought from a plastic supply place uh, oh, ages ago. I used a chunk of it already to um, make a, um, um, a storage rack on the, on the back of the big lathe and that's been really useful. Anyway, so I've got to hack a hacker piece off this to be for the collet rack. So <coughs> I have to, yeah, so I have to take a piece uh, 265 long from here. I don't know how well this saw is going to work out cutting this stuff. I think I used it. <coughs> right. I'll turn the. Keep my fingers away from the trigger while I'm doing this. 265. All right, <clears throat> see how we go with this. Okay, well let's go and see if it fits in the drawer. Yeah, happy with that. So that'll, get, uh, that'll be just fine. Then we've got to work out what size holes to put in it. So that's the next bit. So apparently these guys are, are pretty close to 41 I suppose. Pretty close enough for this uh, exercise to see them to uh, think of them as 41 diameter okay so now it's to work out how to uh, get some 41 diameter holes in there the piece I need to bore the holes in won't fit in the milling vise so I have to clamp it to the milling table, but I've got to be able to bore right through it, so it's got to be spaced off the table. And I also wanted to be able to mount it so that um, I could uh, take it off and put it back in the same place if necessary. So I had a couple of these, and I turned that one, turned the other one, into this. Um, it's cut a couple of um, uh, big shoulders on it, so it's really like an upside down T-nut. And the idea is it will go into the back slot, uh, clamp down and be a firm stop and locator for the back of the slab. 
So let's go and have a look and see what that looks like. Okay, so we're looking at the job now. This is the thing that's going to have all the holes put in it. It's spaced off the table, uh, about uh, eight I suppose, something like that. It's enough anyway that the cutter can come through without damaging the table. Um, there's the stop block uh, on the back of the, uh, the on the back slot in the lay, in the um, table. <coughs> um, now I've got it held down, um, and I don't know how well you can see. Oh, you can see one there. It's actually sitting on T nuts, on the lip on T nuts, and I was careful to select four T nuts that all had the, had the same thickness of uh, of lip. So that's got that sitting at a uh, off the table with a bit of clearance for the cutter. And I had it, uh, so as I said, I think earlier, that uh, if I need to take it out, I can put it back in the same location. So once I've got the um, uh, DRO uh, set on the corner here, uh, my, my datum point, I can put it back and resume business if I need to. But looking at it, I just realised what I used as a spacer here it really isn't good enough. It's just uh, just sitting there between the side of the vice and the, the work. But the side of the vice there is not milled. It's a rough cast thing, so there's no guarantee that it go back in exactly the same place. So I think I'll put something a bit more definite um, up this end. Now I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but I've actually got one of these guys. Um, uh, bolted down to the the table as a as a stop, so that's a very positive uh, corner which I can uh, more sensibly because that's the uh, what I want to use as my datum point, so I can shove the piece of work into that corner if I have to take it out. Um, so I don't actually need to have this piece in there anymore. We'll get rid of that. Okay, so you understand what I want to do? I want to have. Uh, three rows of five uh, holes on a 50 millimeter grid so the spacing between them is going to be just under 10 millimeters about 9.5 and so um, starting from zero the location of the first hole is uh, 31 along for X and 31 along for Y etc and there's the uh, locations for the next one so um, that's where DRO is really useful because you can just move those increments along and uh, Bob's your mother's brother. Okay, so you understand what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a 37mm slot drill to push a hole 17mm deep into this 20mm thick stuff. So that will leave 3mm uh, at the bottom. And then I'll use this uh, hole saw to go right through that. And this is... Um, um, what's this? 35 millimeters so I'll be left with um, um, a ridge or a land all, all the way around the bottom of the hole and I'll be following that up with the boring bar to open the top of the hole out to uh, suit the um, large diameter of the uh, collet so it's a three-step process to get the uh, um, three diameters that I want Okay, so we're all set. We're on the uh, 31, 31 from the datum corner, and um, I've got my um, quill DRO set, so I can come down exactly 17. Uh, let's go. generating a lot of this is going to be a bit of an issue. So I'll go for a slightly um, so I'll go for a slightly more aggressive feed. Pretty sharp this cutter as you can see. <laughs> Thank you. 
getting close now. We're at 16. So I'll feed it with the, the, the quill wheel now, or the hand wheel now. That's my 17. So I think what I'll do now, yeah, just to make it easier for the, the following holes, is to set the uh, quill depth stop at that. So I'll wind this guy here up. The lock nut. So now I won't be able to go deeper than 17 on the subsequent holes. So I decided to do the full set of three holes on the uh, the first one just to make sure that uh, things are going the way I want them to go. Now. Um, just to help avoid accidents, I might uh, slip something under this slab, a bit of plywood or something. Yeah, a piece of this stuff will do. It's some really skinny um, craft wood, but it's enough to make sure that uh, if I get clumsy, um, the uh, the hole saw isn't going to attack my table. So I think it's a useful uh, security measure, safety measure. Okay, off we go. Alright, so now it's time to take the hole saw out and put the um, boring head in. Now I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get this in. Oh, look at that. <laughs> was lucky. Just. So with this guy, I want to come down about 12. some of that. Oh, that's a bit of heat's melted some of the plastic. Doesn't matter. Keep going down. When you get down to 12. So I think we'll take it out and do a proper test fit and make sure we're, we're on the money because the way I've got it set I can easily put it back into the same place. Right. So I think you can see you can see there's quite a bit of flashing I've got to just cut out with a scalpel. Okay so perhaps you can see inside the hole And that fits neat as you like. Just turning him over so you can see um, 
like that. So I'm happy with that. So 14 more of those please. Okay, off we go with the uh, second hole and I'll be doing uh, the rest of the 14 of uh, the 14 other holes with this cutter before I change it out to minimize the tool changes. Certainly making plenty of swarf. At least this stuff doesn't stick in your fingers. <laughs> and it still spend us from it. Now the hole in the bottom. Well, there's a couple of scars on the board, so I think it uh, probably saved my table from damage. You're seeing the video of boring the last two holes here in real time, as I decided, or I discovered, that I got a much better result by um, feeding the boring um, cutter in very quickly, rather than slowly feeding it down. Didn't generate as much heat, and I got a much cleaner cut. So I cleaned all the bits of flesh out with a scalpel and uh, of course I realised uh, fairly early in the piece that I'd ballsed up um, the location of the grid pattern on the piece of material. Uh, I think what happened is that um, I wanted the whole pattern to be as close to the, what will be the front of the drawer as possible to leave the spare at the, the back of the drawer and unfortunately um, I used that same offset there from the side without thinking about it uh, properly and of course I should have centered the pattern here instead of just using that same offset. Anyway, do I care? No, not really. It's not going to affect the function of the thing. It'll be in a shut drawer most of the time. If it really ticks me off I guess I'll just make another one. Lessons learned. If I'd marked it out uh, with pen or something first maybe it would have been more obvious. Perhaps not. Anyway, it is what it is. And I've put uh, some feet on the bottom. So let's go and put it in the drawer and see what it looks like. Okay, well here we are with a installed. Quite uh, happy with the way that works. No more clanging when the drawer shuts. And they will stay in place. So certainly call that a win. Okay, a couple of learning outcomes from this project. First was when I went to uh, make this piece and cut out these big uh, shoulders here. I started off by using the one inch um, diameter roughing end mill. And yeah, it was doing it, but uh, it was going to take a while. I switched over to using this beast, which is a 75 diameter uh, five tooth uh, cutter and it ripped through it as you could see in some of the video and it, it was just ripping the metal off so if I've ever got to make another one of these things or you know something that requires big shoulders another set of T-nuts maybe this is going to be the tool of choice no doubt about that and another outcome I started off um, doing the holes using this this is a forced in a bit and um, it was doing it but uh, it wasn't doing it very fast and it left um, it was it required quite a bit of pressure which caused the bottom of the hole um, the back side of the material to bow out a little bit and I switched over to using this dude 
and he is sharp, this fella, I can tell you. Switched over to using that one you saw for yourself. That was just cutting through it like a knife through butter. So, uh, yeah, that was definitely a better choice. Well, let's finish another one. Uh, got a result that gets the job done. Can't say I'm completely happy with it because, of course, I messed up the location of the whole pattern on the, on the piece of work. But it gets the job done. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Final word on tooling, though. Um, I used a boring head uh, to clean out the top of the hole to a particular diameter, which I didn't have a, an exact cutter for. Um, this particular boring head is capable of um, boring tapers. The, it can change the diameter as it rotates. But because um, I needed to have the uh, diameter of the hole at the uh, top and bottom face of the piece of work uh, to an exact dimension, um, because I wanted the, uh, the collets to drop in and sit at a, a very uniform height, uh, at an exact height, um, because the draw, uh, it might not have been obvious, but there was only about two millimetres of height clearance between the bottom of the draw, the collet and the, uh, the draw above. So the collet had to be very exactly located and I didn't think I'd easily achieve that by trying to borrow a taper. Anyway, it, it, that's the way it went. Well, that's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, perhaps you'd hit the like button, maybe subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, hit the bell to be told of upcoming videos. So, see you on the next one, and thanks again for watching.